hymn number 106 as we continue in worship this morning. Hymn number 106, I'll invite you to stand as we sing. If you're able, hark the herald, angels sing, glory to the newborn king. They brought unto him all that were diseased, and then that them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning rising, a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. When they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken immediately, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. 
And he charged him straightly, and forthwith sent him away, and said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out, and began to publish it much, and blaze abroad the matter, insomuch Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. May the Lord had a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. We're going to turn together to another hymn of praise, 378. 378. Remain seated as we sing, Now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me. 378. <laughs>
ladies for that lovely number. 122 is our next hymn for the message. 122. I'll invite you to stand if you're able and we'll sing, Who is he in yonder stall? Tis the Lord, a wonder story. 122. <laughs> Son. And the Lord Jesus, as he ministered, he shared with those that he spoke to of the love that he had for his Father, his Heavenly Father, but also the love of the Father that he has for each one of us. And I'd like to share a number in song. <laughs> Deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing love. turns his face away as wings which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a cross I sin upon 
unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he said unto them, it is, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel how, with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him. And from Judea and from Jerusalem and from Edomia and from beyond Jordan and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he healed, had healed many, insomuch they 
pressed upon him for to touch him, so many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let's bow together in a word of prayer. Father, thank you again. We can be gathered around your word today. We thank you, Father, for the worship that has been shared this morning as we've lifted up our songs of praise unto thee. We thank you, Father, that we've gathered together to lift up our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to make much of him, to uh, allow the Spirit of God, we pray that he would, uh, we would be yielded to his control so that he would work in our midst today. We know he has a desire to work. He has a desire to draw us closer to thyself. And so we pray, Father, that you would encourage each one of our hearts here this morning. And, Father, that our hearts would burn within us with a desire to be faithful in the work that you've called us to do. And, Father, we pray that you would minister to each each need here today, Father. You know each one of our hearts and you know each and every condition and situation that we're in. And so, Father, we pray that you would minister by thy spirit. And, Father, that we would go from this place rejoicing in our salvation and in what you're doing in our lives. And, Father, how we can trust a faithful God, one who uh, he knows the end from the beginning. And we thank you, Lord, that you're in complete control. And so, Father, as we explore the life of the Lord Jesus and his earthly ministry, we thank you, Father, that the power of Christ is still at work today. We pray, Father, that we would be seeking to have your will accomplished in each one of our lives, that you would receive the honor and glory and the praise. For in Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. We began a message last week together and a series of messages a couple of weeks ago entitled Following Jesus. Following Jesus. And I don't know if this will work for me today, but we'll try it. I guess it is. So we were last week, we were together in Capernaum, or Capernaum as we find it in the Bible. And we found that the Lord Jesus used this city as a, a base for his earthly ministry. We know it was where Peter, James, John, many of the fishers were called to follow Jesus. That he said, follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And so they left their nets and they followed the Lord Jesus we looked last time together a day in the ministry or the life of the Lord Jesus. And from dawn till dusk, he was busy serving, busy ministering. And so we know that the um, city of Capernaum was on the Sea of Galilee. And so we are going to follow the Lord Jesus today in what we could call the next uh, part of our message is following Jesus to the Sea of Galilee. And we know that Jesus stopped a lot of the, at these villages and these towns and cities all around the, the area of Galilee. And uh, he would heal many people. He would teach people. There were some times that he would do few miracles. There were times he would do many miracles. But we come to a point now in the text that we find that there are many people that are following the Lord Jesus. And so we're going to consider this. We've read through the passage. We find that he enters into the synagogue. This was very common as Jesus would come into a city or town. He enters into the synagogue and he finds a man there that has a, a withered hand. And it was the Sabbath day and Jesus not only knew what everybody's face looked like, but he also knew what everybody's heart looked like. He knew that there were people there. There were Pharisees who were looking to cause problems with the, the work in the ministry of Jesus. They were trying to discredit him. And so now they were looking to see what Jesus would do to this man who has the withered hand and to see whether he would do some work on the Sabbath day. And uh, notice it says in verse 2, and they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they may, might accuse him. We find the word accused there. And you know the Bible speaks of the accuser of the brethren. We know that Satan is busy trying to cause distraction. He's, he's trying to destroy the work and the ministry of the local church. He's trying to destroy the, the, the ministry and the testimony of individual Christians. He is the great accuser of the brethren. And he's also been very busy in the work of the ministry of the Lord Jesus, trying to either discredit him or try to cause disruption to what the Lord Jesus was doing. And we know that 
when faced with the devil, they would cry out and bow before him because they said, we know who thou art, the Holy One of God. They cried there. They fell down before him and cried saying, Thou art the Son of God. This was the demons that cried out to Jesus, recognizing who he was. And so Jesus calls the man and he says, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. You know, when Jesus looked at the group there and looked at the religious leaders, and the anger He had toward them, it wasn't, He wasn't looking at their robes and so on. He was looking right in their heart. And the Bible says He was grieved for the hardness of their hearts. He said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole was him. That's all the Lord Jesus had to do, to say, stretch forth thy hand. And, and that man who had a withered hand, that man who, and the muscles that would have been, uh, you know, all of the physical parts of what would have caused that man uh, to be in that condition and the degeneration of his, of his bones and his muscles, for him just to be able to stretch forth his hand, the miracle that took place in that moment. And he'd be able to use his hand, he'd be able to work. He'd be able to care for those that he loves. Maybe he would have been at a place before where he may have sat by the wayside begging like others who were either blind or or had other uh, physical problems. The Lord Jesus heals them. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy, destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him. And so we find that Jesus, he comes to the sea. And I want you to notice particularly verse number 8. Because it says here in verse number 8, or verse 9, I don't know what I've got here. Verse 8, I think I meant to say, um, no, it is verse 8, yeah. The second part of the verse, it says, A great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. The key word that we looked at last week was the word authority. When Jesus spoke, he spoke with authority and power. And the the key word I want us to find here this morning is found in verse 8, and it's the word heard. When they had heard what great things he did. When they had heard the word of the Lord Jesus was spreading. And so we're going to look at some of the areas in which it was spreading. But I guess we could ask ourselves the question or think about this thought. Hearing makes an impact. Hearing makes an impact. In the everyday life, well, I think about a a foghorn or maybe a lighthouse, and uh, it certainly makes an impact to those that are on the water, maybe trying to find shore, uh, trying to find uh, safety. Uh, Shelly used to sleep up in uh, Rustico. Grace is here. She probably remembers sleeping up by the lighthouse in Rustico as children, and the foghorn would be going off through the night. That certainly made an impact on their sleep. (laughs) For those that were on the shore, but those that were in the water, it could make an impact for safety of, of letting them know where the shore was. What about hearing, whether it comes to emergency services, when you hear sirens, we often think, where are they? We need to pull over. Uh, certainly hearing makes an impact on the physical side of things, but then we think of the spiritual side of things. Hearing makes an impact and the importance of hearing. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, notice what it says here. Romans chapter 10, reading it at verse 12, says this, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
How important is it for us to have spiritual ears to be open to God's Word, to spiritually hear the message that He has for us? Jesus spoke about the importance of not only hearing, but the importance of doing, putting it into action. And we find this over in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 in the Sermon on the Mount. And He concludes the sermon and He's speaking about the danger of building our house upon the sand or building our house upon the rock. And He talks about the individual who hears but then does something about it. And the individual who hears and doesn't do anything about it. And so he says in verse 24, Therefore, whether whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority. And not as the scribes. The importance of hearing. The importance of Jesus said in many places that we think of the book of the Revelation. He that hath ears to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And so when we have God's word open before us. The Spirit of God desires for us to hear not just with our ears. But that we would hear with our hearts. And that we would have a desire to respond to his leading. And so hearing does make an impact. And the Apostle Paul said to them in Romans, How shall they hear? Uh, how shall they hear except they um, uh, believe on Him and who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And uh, there was a great response as a result of them hearing about the Lord Jesus. And we can ask the question then, Who heard? The message. Who heard the message? And notice what it says here. Who heard about Jesus? It tells us back in our text in Mark chapter 3 and verse number 7. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude. A great multitude. From Galilee followed him. So who heard about Jesus? A great multitude heard about Jesus. And who were they that came? It says, from Galilee, from Judea, from Jerusalem, from Edomia, from Jordan, uh, uh, beyond Jordan, about Tyre and Sidon. When they had, uh, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things He did, came unto Him. And I thought about all of these places that the Lord Jesus, the Word of the Lord Jesus spread through. And we have a little map here of Israel and various places are mentioned here I'm just going to start at the bottom and work our way up but it talks about Edomia here way down now where were they they were way up in the Sea of Galilee and then multitudes came from the lowest parts of Israel from Judea from Jerusalem from it says beyond Jordan and uh, all these places from Galilee from Tyre and Sidon. And they were coming down. The multitudes were coming. And can you imagine as they come and they gather here at Capernaum. And just the, 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 the great company. I guess you didn't see a thing I put up there. <laughs> That's all right. Anyway. Check your Bible maps. I'm all over the place. <laughs> now I have to find where I was. <laughs> Anyway, if I do that and I do this, it might come up. This is probably one of the reasons why I don't do uh, uh, PowerPoint and all the rest of things, but we'll find our way here. do this and we'll do this and that's no that's not going to do it either well we'll just work for a second 
So what I was all from a great multitude from great many places they followed the Lord Jesus to see where he was where he was where he was ministering from and they wanted to they heard about his miracles they heard about his mighty works uh, and so they all come to uh, see the Lord Jesus and so we see all these areas as it tells us in the verses verse 8 and from Jerusalem from Edomia from beyond Jordan they about Tyre and Sidon a great multitude when they had heard what great things he did came on to him. And this would have been quite an experience. The disciples, they're, they're with the Lord. Uh, they're following him. Uh, and and uh, there is a lot of pressure now. Because when you get a crowd, you can have, begin to have problems. <laughs> and uh, in set, it says they were afraid here in verse 9. Of, that the multitude, lest they throng him or, or press uh, uh, not, uh, the idea of it kind of being almost like a mob scene, such a large group, and they spake to his, he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. And uh, and why were they coming to him? Why were they following him? For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And all of these that uh, came to the Lord Jesus, and all of these that. Uh, followed him those that had plagues and it was all as a result of hearing because they had heard of him and so when the Lord Jesus uh, ministered uh, word was spread and the multitudes came I was thinking of what that would be like today if people would respond the same way to the message of Jesus wouldn't it be wonderful as we share the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that the multitudes would want to come and would want to hear about this one who can save a soul from destruction. He can change our lives. He can help us to live for him. He can cause uh, a family that is in unrest and instability and, and sorrow to, to have purpose and be able to work together as a unit, to have fellowship one with another, for a body of believers to come together, be edified and strengthened. And, and we're living in days, and the Bible speaks that there's going to be, a, and there is a departure of these things. And there were days that have gone by where there used to be great groups of people that would gather together and desire to worship the name of the Lord and lift up his name. But we're living in days where it is becoming few and few. We're, we're, we're living in great days of deception where the devil has put so many other things. And he says, now you'll be satisfied with this and you'll be satisfied with this. And he'll cause just so many distractions and say, well, they'll try this for a while. And when they become dissatisfied, well, we'll give them this and then we'll give them this. And if we can distract them throughout their whole lives, lest they turn to Christ and they find true joy, true satisfaction, a true uh, salvation, eternal life. And so... These lives had been changed physically, yes. He was healing them. The people who had plagues, uh, those that were had unclean spirits in verse 11, and the unclean spirits, when they saw Him, fell down before Him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And He straightly charged them that they should not make Him known. And so, all because they heard of Jesus. And I was, I was thinking of the message, Who is Jesus calling then today? Who is Jesus calling today? We know what it tells us in the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. And it tells us the Lord Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the name of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so the Lord Jesus, He's calling. He was calling His disciples to go. He was calling them to go to make more disciples. And the idea here is, as a result of hearing the gospel and response to the gospel, an individual saved, and then see them grow in the things of the Lord. See them baptized. See them desiring to be taught and to observe what Christ has taught us in His Word. It tells us in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20 to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so the message is for us to go and, and give the message. And so that's why we're called to go. And we, we ask the question, well, we live here in PEI, what can we do? How can I be involved in this work uh, that God's calling me to? I, mean, just, I think you can see what I'm doing here. John chapter 15. Notice what it says. We need to realize this before we can even take one step forward in, in the work 
uh, of the ministry and the work of, of being an evangelist. In John chapter 15, it says this in verse 5. The Lord Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And the first principle we ask and we find is that without the Lord Jesus, there is nothing that we can do in and of our own strength and of our own power that's going to amount into uh, a, a spiritual good. And so we need to realize we need to go with the power and the help and the enablement of the Lord. Realize that it's Him that brings the increases. The Apostle Paul taught the church at Corinth. There are some that water, there's some that plants, but God brings the increase. He is to get the glory. He says, without me, you can do nothing. And then uh, we need to realize, secondly, that we cannot be involved in the work of the Lord if, if we don't know Him personally as our Savior. We, don't, we will not be... Uh, if our lives haven't been changed first and foremost, it tells us in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And so we're to send the message out for others to hear, but we need to make sure, first of all, that I know Christ is my personal Savior, that there was a time in my life where I turned from my sin, believing that Jesus died on the cross for me, that He was buried, He rose again the third day, and that by faith I place... Uh, my faith and trust in Him. The Apostle Paul said, the one who loved me, the one who gave Himself for me. <clears throat> and you know there are so many in the world today that teach that we can get to heaven various number of ways. Jesus says to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And here in the text it says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved, and it is His name, the name of Jesus. It is His name. It is Jesus who, who can cleanse the leper. It's Jesus who can heal the, the blind. It's Jesus who can heal the man who had the withered hand. It's Jesus who the multitudes were, were thronging toward Him because he had, they had heard about Him, and now they were beginning to witness His miracles. And the third thing about this, if we're going to be the ones that are going to be set to go, we need to be saved. Yes, we need to be uh, realize that it is without the Lord we can do nothing. But then we realize the importance of the Holy Spirit of God's ministry in the work. And it tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18. It says this, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And when we read that verse, that word fill is a word which speaks of control or, or being led or allowing the Spirit of God to have full control in every area of our lives. And what will that result in? And, and uh, an individual who has a Spirit-filled or Spirit-controlled life it says in verse 19, speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Someone who is not desiring to be led by the Holy Spirit of God isn't going to have a desire to have songs and hymns and spiritual songs in our hearts and making a joyful melody to the Lord. That comes as a result of someone who the, the Lord is working in their lives, in their heart. They're desiring to be yielded to His control. Notice what other thing you're going to find. It says, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. An individual who is being led and controlled by the Spirit of God is going to have a thankful heart, going to be thankful and quick to give thanks always for all things unto God. And there are so many things in this life we just take for granted. I was speaking to the teens on, we had team, we had bowling night. I said to them, uh, we're going to go bowling. And um, there was a great turnout. There was about 18 or so uh, out for the activity. And, and uh, one of the lanes was down, so we were down to three lanes. That was fine. So I didn't bowl. That, I just bowled one, bowl, uh, because, uh, one ball uh, because I knew it would go in the gutter anyway. Uh, but I put it down. and didn't all the pins knock down in the one thing. <laughs> and I said, there you go. I said, that's the only one I'm putting down. You can do the rest. And uh, one of the Haley boys from Surrey, he, he did good. He did a good job in my name because my name was on the screen, and he, he put them all. He he, he won that 
won that round. But I, we brought them back into the house, and of course you have to feed them, so teenagers, they like to eat, so we made sure they were well fed. But then we brought them downstairs, and we sang some hymns and opened the Word of God, and one of the things that I was impressing to them from God's Word, uh, and thinking about the importance of um, following the Lord, thinking about the importance of being yielded to the Holy Spirit in our lives and, and that God has a purpose and a will for each and every one of us and that we ought to be desiring to be spirit-led. We, we ought to be desiring to do right in our lives, to serve the Lord because these are the years in which we're going to make some of the greatest decisions that are going to impact the rest of our life and trying to help them understand. And I shared, you know, there are times in my life I made some poor decisions and they had a certain impact upon my life. And, uh, but then there are other decisions. I said, okay, Lord, I'll allow you to be in control. And when we allow God to be in control, He begins to open doors. And when there's a Spirit-filled life that says, Lord, take the lead, and the Spirit-filled life that allows, uh, the, the, there's a thankful heart, and there's these things that are going to be produced as a result of the Spirit of God's leading, that we begin to do what the Lord has called us to do. And, and it's not that we have to search out and find God's will and it's just going to be some great search in every area, but we just begin to walk in the obedience of Christ and God reveals His will to us. And, uh, and it was, they were so attentive and it was wonderful to have them uh, there. And so we, we realized that there are, there's another generation coming. And that uh, to be able to take the torch and to go with the gospel. And uh, what can I do? Uh, we can do much with God. We can do nothing in and of ourselves. And we need to be spirit led. And uh, another thing I was trying to impress upon the children or the teenagers was uh, to be faithful. And God calls us to faithfulness. And that's something that we can all do today. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Apostle Paul, um, he's writing to Timothy and he's desiring to encourage him in the ministry. And he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, he says these words, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Remember, Timothy, in the ministry, the Apostle Paul coming to the end of his ministry and going to be departing from this life and desiring to encourage Timothy in the work. He says, the things that you have heard, in verse 2, and the things which thou hast heard of me. Did hearing make an impact? Absolutely it made an impact on Timothy's life. He says, you take the message, you take the teachings of the Apostle of the Word of God, and you, you go and you teach the church, and you desire to train up others that are going to go forth and desire to teach the brethren, teach the church, be a faithful witness. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And yes, there's a, a, a responsibility to those that are involved in the ministry of the Word of God that they be found faithful. But there's a, there's a call to all of us as Christians that we be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful in all that God calls us to do. And uh, when I was just going into the ministry when I was uh, just finishing Bible school, and one of the wives of one of the teachers pastors at the school said this to me uh, going out she said I wrote it in my Bible and she said this just be faithful and leave the results up to God just be faithful and leave the results up to God you know many times in our lives we 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 we're trying to see some kind of result or we're trying to do something that'll produce something just be faithful in what God has called us to do trust him uh, and leave the results up to Him. Allow Him to bring the increase as He wills in His timing and, uh, and be faithful in the message that He's called us to share. And so when we think about the ministry here in this church, we, we think uh, we've been, uh, the, the church has been uh, since uh, 2012 or 13 or around that point. Lydia just said the first it's the person that ever signed the guest book. I think it was somewhere around 2013. And, uh, and we see the faithfulness of God's people all through those years. 
And may we be encouraged to keep on being faithful and, and just trust the Lord that he'll continue to work in and through us, that he'll use his word for his glory. We think of those that we're now having an impact on through the online ministry, and there's so many that are being able to hear God's word that we didn't, weren't able to reach before. But now as a result of being able to have an online ministry, we can share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with others. Uh, and so did hearing make an impact? Absolutely. They came from all over Israel to, because they heard about Jesus. And we pray today that so many would come to receive Christ as their personal Savior because they've heard of this Jesus, the one who loved them, the one who gave his life for them on the cross, and the one who rose victorious from the grave, the one who wants to save us, the one who wants to change us, the one who wants to go with us each and every day and every step of our journey until we go to meet him in the air. Let's uh, bow together in a word of prayer and thank the Lord for this time around his word. Father, we thank you for the privilege of opening your word today. Father, help us to be faithful. We need your strength. We need your power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit of God working in our midst. Father, forgive us so many times in our lives where we are, we are unfaithful to you. Father, we try to go out and go in our own strength. And Father, we find ourselves without joy, without a song in our heart, without a thankful heart. Father, may you work in our hearts and cause us to get things right. And that, Father, we would just willingly step out by faith and say, Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, help me to be faithful in what you've given me today. May we not be afraid of what you've called us to. Father, we know we have fears. We think of Moses. He was fearful of the calling that you placed upon him. And he found some excuses of why it might not be the best fit. And we know, Father, there will be always excuses we can use. But none replace the calling that you've given upon our lives and our hearts. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to be faithful. We pray that many would hear and that many would respond. Thank you for how they responded in the days of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray. We know that there are many souls being saved around the world today in countries in different languages that we speak than we speak, Lord. We thank you that the message of Jesus is being spread around the world today. And there are still those that want to hear and want to come and receive him as their own. Father, we pray that you'd help us with those that you place into our lives, that we can be a witness that they too might hear and come to know Jesus. We pray, Father, for the challenges that we are going to face this week. Lord, we pray that you would encourage our hearts. And Father, you would help us to be led by the power of the Spirit of God, that you'd put that song in our hearts and you'd put a thankfulness upon our lips. And Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. We pray you'd part us with thy blessing. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thee thanks. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your songbooks and we're going to turn together to a closing hymn number 414. Number 414. And we'll sing the first and the last verse and our service will be over, but it is the hymn, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Let's stand as we prayerfully sing this in close. 414. Oh, there's no other 
sense we will go. 